Hello everyone, welcome to Best Notes Tutorials. It's war and peace which we are going to discuss today. This is a novel, this is a Russian novel which is written by great writer Leo Tolstoy. So let's understand few things about Leo Tolstoy in order to understand his work. Leo Tolstoy, after returning from Siberian jail, he wanted, he had decided rather to write a poetry on Russia the turmoil that Russia was going through and the people who had experienced the worst side of this war and political unrest. Leo Tolstoy was a volcanic soul and he wanted to do something for Russian people so that they will understand the present scenario of Russia. So for that particular purpose he wrote this book called war and peace now we will understand about the text all right this is the gist of war and peace and then we will move to theme of the novel background summary and about the author as well so one by one we will be discussing everything at first let me tell you what is the text all about dear students War and Peace. This is a novel which is written by Russian author Leo Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy had written Anna Karenina also. There also he focused on the themes related to aristocrats and their immoral activities. So now here we see the novel was published in parts. It started in the year 1863. All right, 1863, Leo Tolstoy started writing the novel and it was published first edition was published in the year 65 it was rectified in 67 1867 and finally the full volume was published in the year 1869 leo tolstoy is regarded as the greatest writer of russia it is because he has written numerous masterpieces and this one, that is War and Peace, this is one of the best novels of Leo Tolstoy. And see here, it is widely regarded as one of the greatest work of literature as is considered Tolstoy's masterpiece. So here, though we have other masterpieces of Leo Tolstoy, but this is the best one. It not only talks about European countries and its invasion, but it also talks about Russian country, that is Russian nation as well. The story is set in the years leading up to and during the Napoleonic War, and it follows the lives of aristocratic families and their interactions with one another during the turbulent or tumultuous historical event of the time so here friend you need to understand about napoleonic war which we will discuss during the background of the story which we will do after completion of this portion that is about the text okay so here you will get to know about aristocratic families particularly there are five aristocratic families all right why aristocratic families you must be aware that aristocratic families are elite families all right, rich families whose motive was to enjoy life to the fullest. They used to talk about food, fashion, love and enjoyment. Nothing else. All right, so how the war between Russia and France changed entire system of Russia that is discussed here. And not only common people, forget about common people, Russian elite people, elite people, sorry, and aristocratic people, they had also been a victim in the play, in the novel, sorry. So here, I will be telling you who all are the characters in the story. Students, in the novel, we get to see that what was the reaction of aristocratic people during the crisis time and how they interacted with each other whether it was a helping hand or it was discussion of something else which they used to do on a general basis that is i told you about food love fashion etc 
The novel is renowned for its expansive cast of characters. There are many. See, I have already told you that there are five families. So in one family, there are five to six members. So you can imagine that the character list is a lengthy one. Now, intricate plot lines. Cast of characters, that is number one. Number two, intricate means giving all the details about the character. Plot line, the main plot on which uh, you know, a ground on which topic the the novel is being dealt, and vivid description of battle scenes. I told you that th there was a battle between France and Russia. Therefore, what was the ground reality that was told by Leo Tolstoy to the readers? So we need we will get a vivid picture of the war battlefield as well. See friends, see uh, here, war and peace. This is a contemplation of human existence. Contemplation means to think, all right, to think properly, to muse the actions of human being, the actions of leaders, the actions of poor people. All right, so war and peace talks about the contemplation of human existence. Now, why, what is the motive of existence of human being for what purpose they are on earth and the various factors that shape it it means when the tragedy comes all right people change accordingly see the life of aristocrats had changed because of war this shows that during crisis period to a nation none of the members none of the uh, uh, you know citizen are spared they have to receive they have to experience the turmoil that occurs in a country we cannot say we cannot or the situation will not leave aloof the aristocratic category or the businessman category all right so what we need to understand is that the tragedy is for everyone the favor the luxuries the facilities might not be for everyone because common people Poor people, they don't receive it. But when the tragedy comes to a nation, then it happens or it is to be shared with everyone. So in the first point, we get to see that the tragedy is for everyone. And being a human, we need to understand this, this fact. Next point is Tolstoy delves into themes such as love, war, politics, religion and history's impact on human affair. See, the novel is not only about one theme. It talks about love. All right. Human uh, basic trait is love, to love someone, to be loved. All right. For love, we, you know, talk excessively about uh, uh, having a good bonding with people because hatred will not solve the issue, but love will. With the uh, you know, introduction or installation of love in human being, we can move mountains. But with hatred, it will be next to impossible. All right. Even Alexander, even Hitler was not able to do that because they hated the humankind. But eventually they had to die a horrible death. Next, the novel is also notable for its realism. Realism means it is related to reality. Everything that we find in the novel, that be it situation, that is the situation of war that we see in our day-to-day -day life. If I talk about today, even, you know, today um, or since last year, the war between Russia and Ukraine is going on. It has not stopped. All right. So <clears throat> the situation is realistic. All right, it's not only happening in the mind of the writer, but it is seen by entire globe. So this is realism and attention to detail. Attention to detail means each and every detail is given in an intricate manner so that there is no confusion. There is no, you know, dilemma in making the character in the mind of the readers. Tolstoy aimed to capture the essence of life in 19th century Russia. So what kind of Russia was during that period is mentioned in this novel. And basic details are given in order to 
give clear picture about the characters about the situation about the leaders about the rich people's lifestyle etc the last point out here is all in all war and peace is a timeless masterpiece timeless masterpiece because the theme which is discussed there the background which we find there it is still relatable and the writing uh, you know in which leo tolstoy made this masterpiece reach to us this is awesome that continues to captivate readers with its richly drawn characters epic scope and profound insight into the human condition i told you that every situation is not going to be same but we need to prepare ourselves for the future as well every time it is not going to be similar today it's sunshine the next day it might be rainfall it might be earthquake all right it could be natural calamity for which one should be ready so students in the novel we find that there are numerous characters and uh, these characters represent the people who lived in russia during 18th century all right they were their way of living their way of dealing with people everything is mentioned as we have discussed earlier and see not only that throughout the course of the novel these characters interact with each other creating a complex and detailed portrayal of russian society during the early 19th century now see here it talks about the russian society in details okay in details because russian society was not you know up to the mark the there was division between poor uh, poor people there was uh, you know division between uh, elite people and middle class so because of class distinction there was division in the society but leo tolstoy has this, you know uh, in a vivid manner he had decided to give portrayal that is picture of russian society so that we can understand the text in a judicious way now next we have to go back you know go to the background of the novel then only we will be able to understand this novel in first read first of all we need to understand about napoleonic war all right the wars which is initiated by or at the wars where napoleon bonaparte was engaged he was from france the novel takes place against the back backdrop of napoleonic war a series of conflicts fought between france and various european powers from 1803 to 1815 we know this date 1815 which is the battle of waterloo all right battle of battle of waterloo in this napoleon was totally defeated all right now see napoleon bonaparte he was winning the wars one after the other and because of this he had come to russia as well for the conquer of russian estates see friends he had already captured most of the european european nations all right now he wanted to occupy russia as well but unfortunately he came to russia for uh, fighting and acquiring its land but he came during wrong season friends during that period Russian kings or the Russian rulers were known as czars all right just like in Egypt the rulers were regarded as pharaohs okay in the same way russians rulers were known as czars so we are going to talk about them friends napoleon bonaparte during that period had become a great power in european nations all right so now what he wanted he wanted to capture entire russia so that his power can be doubled all right now on 12th of september 1812 he attacked upon Mos- moscow which is the capital of russia now the planning of 
you know, Napoleon Bonaparte was that if they will cover Moscow, that is the capital of Russia, he will be able to capture and uh, capture entire Russia and even Alexander, the Tsar of Russia will give up in this battle. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Why? Let us understand. Now see, when uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, he attacked Moscow, he was able to capture that as well. But during that time, you know, be, being very clever, the Tsar of Russia had already asked his uh, its soldier to come back. Okay, move back from Moscow. So entire Moscow had been emptied from, uh, emptied and the uh, soldiers of Napoleon Bonaparte could not do much in Moscow. Now he could not get anything like he used to compensate his war expenses by going, uh, you know, by attacking those cities and you know, getting his exchequer, getting his treasury refilled. But this time that did not happen because Moscow had already been emptied uh, of civilians, all right? And then he had nothing in his hand. Napoleon had made a wrong choice of attacking Russia during that period. See, friends, in past, Napoleon Bonaparte had won you know a lot of battles but this time he had made a wrong choice as i told you that it was winter season and if you see the you know location of russia you will find it is in you know near to northern hemisphere all right uh, uh, close to northern pole let me rectify northern pole all right it is in northern hemisphere but closer to northern pole so now what happened north pole closer to north pole so what happened here during September, the winter was approaching gradually and then he was not acquainted with this kind of season. Alright, so it seems that without much research work, uh, he had come to Russia. He thought that when he is able to win rest of the countries, then why not Russia? So, you know, every time being self-motivated motivated is not right. So, this was the disaster. This was the... Uh, decision which had <clears throat> opened the gate of death of napoleon bonaparte so what happened he arrived to russia all right he came to russia for capturing it and what happened he was stuck because of winter season now because of less equipment because of lack of ration he was not able to attack further See, after capturing Moscow, when he did not get anything, he was there for around two months. In two months, he had emptied his entire ration um, uh, stores, all right? And even soldiers were also not able to bear the cold waves of Siberian area, all right? The cold of the cold uh, climate of Russia. Therefore, for Russians, it was boon in disguise. Nature had saved them and Napoleon Bonaparte had to give up. Friends, Napoleon in the year 1812 had come with, see, the number of armies when you see, it was in lakhs. Six lakh of soldiers had come, uh, you know, to attack upon Russia. And what did they do? The Russians, under the leadership of Mikhail Kutuzov, okay, Mikhail, General Mikhail Kutuzov, implemented scorched earth. They burnt the areas, they burnt the dry crops and retreated deeper so that Napoleon's army will not be able to sustain. So, in this way, they had set up the tragedy and since Russians were acquainted with their place, they were able to resist the army very efficiently. Now, Napoleon was not able to understand what to do, whether uh, he should go back or fight because for fighting, he did not have 
ration he did not have shoulder soldier now see due to harsh winter and lack of supply the french army suffered significant losses from every everywhere arms and ammunition were getting less okay because those were being destroyed in war next food supply had already been exting, uh, exhausted and there was no channel to supply food for russian troops sorry um napoleon's troops that is french troops anymore now after that what happened napoleon's defeat in russia marked a turning point in the napoleonic war now see when his army were defeated russians had made russians had made france realize that what is their worth they cannot be victorious always all right there are times of other people in some cases as well this was proved by this war and paved the way for his eventual defeat at the battle of waterloo in 1815 now see in 1812 he had come to russia for invasion and 1815 was the time when he died and uh, after the defeat from russia through the historical context of the napoleonic wars tolstoy explores themes such as love family and society while also providing an intricate portrayal of russian society during the tumultuous period in its history now what happened now why this napoleon's uh, invasion is important for this novel see the things which had happened during this war all right during this battle this the same is explained in this novel all right what was the situation of army what was the situation of leaders how it impacted common people what did they do in order to survive and how the life of elites changed altogether all right laborers low lower class people and lower middle class people they suffered undoubtedly but even uh, aristocrats were not left with <coughs> left from the adversities of this war now we will move to see the next point i hope the background is clear to everyone friends when we talk about the writer it is none other than leo tolstoy who wrote the great novel that is war and peace all right the book was published in 1869 with full volume all right first volume was published in 65 1865 sorry 1865 and next volume was published in 1867 and final one was done in 1869 please remember the dates because this will be asked in net examination and other uh, examinations related to literature now we will move ahead leo tolstoy was born in 1828 in yashnaya polyana russia and he passed away in 1910 this is the place in russia where he was born yashnaya polyana he was not only a writer but also a philosopher and social reformer so he was also a philosopher the one who believes uh, the one who believes in philosophy okay how to lead life how to lead wonderful life how to lead sim- you know simple life in a happy way his theory was this he is widely recognized as one of the greatest novelists ever and apart from war and peace he wrote other classic such as anna karenina and the death of ivan Ilyich The story of war and peace takes place during the Napoleonic Wars and it revolves around the lives of five Russian noble families this we have already discussed when we discussed the background uh, of the story now see what is very important out here is that you have to remember that there are so many stories which were written by Leo Tolstoy and all are very important Anna Karenina is also talking about adultery all right and here also we find such kind of theme so what does it confirm it confirms that russian ladies and right, russian ladies uh, you know they had become immoral because of the turmoil that happened in nation as well as in their luxurious life 
Okay, let's move to the next point. Okay, see here children, here, see here friends. The novel explores several themes including love, war, family and the search for purpose and meaning in life. Now see, after the war they realize that who are their near and dear ones. Alright, during war, nothing becomes important than your life. Family is the strength of one's personality and the purpose of life. There, are, there were some who had, uh, you know, who did not know their purpose of life yet. But because of war, they understood that one has to be ready for the supreme sacrifice that is uh, to die for their nation. All right, which was done by soldier in the novel that we will learn. All right, so you need to remember that apart from luxurious life, sacrifice is also the theme of the story. So writer focuses on that. Tolstoy's writing style is notable for its psychological depth. All right, psychological depth means by thinking excessively, uh, the writer comes to a conclusion. It's not that randomly he had chosen that so and so will be the um, character in the novel and they are going to lead the story no everything was done meticulously in order to give clear picture of so, uh, russian society to us so there we find realism and attention to details this is being repeated attention to details because through conversation through uh you know imaginary words we are able to imagine the person itself okay be it a girl boy or a thing it is explained wonderfully so that we can imagine and read and you know see the story in our mind he was an advocate of non-violent resistance and developed an interest in religion and spirituality in his later years so whenever he got time he was interested in spirituality and this was something which he did apart from writing novels overall war and peace is a literary Masterpiece that delves into the intricacies of human experience during a period of significant historical change and upheaval. Now see, War and Peace gives you entire information about the situation of Russia. Okay, for that we need to bow, bow in front of Leo Tolstoy because we cannot go to Russia or anybody who was during that period cannot explain uh, Russia in true sense but he being a writer had collected information about everything he talked with people and then he is able to tell us what is the novel all about so we need to appreciate the writer's effort now friends before we move into the next slide I hope um, the themes are clear to everyone for that let's go through this section now theme the central theme of Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace is the conflict between individuality and societal constraints. Okay, individuality means what I want, how I want myself to be known to the public. And then societal constraints, don't do this, don't do that, this is immoral, this is illicit, this is illegitimate. Everything is decided by society which is so much frustrating in the novel, which is examined through the experiences of characters during the Napoleonic War. Now, all these things happened, individuality, problem, then societal constraints, all these things happened during, during this war, Napoleonic War. Tolstoy suggests that while individuals have the power to make choices, their actions are influenced by larger historical and societal forces beyond their control. Now, that is true. Individual, they have power to make choices. But when the situation is okay, when the situation is not forced by any outer force like Napoleon's, all right, Tsar Alexander, he must have decided something for his country and that should prevail. That was the motive, that was the requirement of common people, at least in this crisis period. But Tolstoy wanted to give larger picture of the novel and its characters. I hope this point is clear. Let's move to the next one. 
Another important theme in the novel is the nature of love and relationship. As I told you, human being cannot live without relation. Be it anything, he has to be uh, getting this. He has to get the support from that particular person. Be it wife, be it friend, be it father, be it uh, girlfriend, anyone. So without that, without love, without relationship, anybody's life is nothing. Tolstoy portrays various forms of love with romantic love to familial love and shows how these relationships can be both fulfilling and destructive. Now see, in the novel we will understand the marriages. Okay, there is crisscross relationships as well. But finally, one of the characters die and everything falls into places. Now what happens after words in this novel we will see in our next video till then please go through it and try to learn the next part on your own by the time i come back with another video friends please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us in different ways thank you everyone let's meet in next video